What do you get when you cross an Irishman and foot in mouth? Liam Neeson. Welcome back to Distant Signal and another video. I want to talk about Liam Neeson and what he said to The Independent, I believe, about how he was getting into character for a revenge film and an incident that he recalled to better get into character regarding the film. Liam Neeson had a friend uh, who was raped some years ago. The time frame is a little unclear from the article, but he had a pretty awful reaction when it came to how he wanted to react to the news that his friend was raped. God, could I come up with a worse sentence? In any case, it sounds like she handled it better than him from the article. He took it to a really racist place and why, he said that he, hold on, I gotta pull up the article. Why, why is this not ready? After he learned about this and how he'd reacted to the news, he said, I quote, I went up and down the areas with a kosh, which is a club of sorts, hoping I'd be approached by somebody. He then goes on to say, I'm ashamed to say that, and I did it for maybe a week, hoping that some black bastard would come out of a pub and have a go at me about something, you know, so that I could kill him, so that I could kill him. Liam Neeson was so desperate for, I don't know what, justice, revenge, to make himself feel better, that he came close to not only killing somebody, it sounds like, but doing it out of a racist place. <laughs> wow. It's so goddamn crazy. Uh, it's such an extreme reaction that it's hard to believe that it, it actually is something that Liam Neeson uh, did. The article and the reaction to it has been a bit extreme as well. One reaction uh, from uh, Malik Russell from the NAACP said, quote, it's unfortunate and sick that Liam Neeson would, would, in response to a tragedy, simply seek out any black person to murder. He's totally right. That is completely fucked up. But if you look at what Liam Neeson said, he, he said he's ashamed of it. So it's important to judge people on their actions. And Liam Neeson did act improperly at the time. And he probably was a short, a powder keg with a short fuse, ready to kill some black person uh, based on this fact that his friend was raped. But, you know, he said after about a week, he was able to calm down and he realized just how bad it was and that he's, he, he feels ashamed for it. So Liam Neeson isn't a racist, it sounds like. It sounds like he was a guy who was desperate for something and became completely irrational. And who knows, maybe back then he was a lot more racist. I, you know, I don't know him, but it's safe to say that when you feel shame about something, you do realize that you've made a terrible error. Liam Neeson says that this is a lesson for him about how vengeance is an empty vessel, that all it brings you is more and more vengeance. Liam Neeson's right, violence begets violence, hate begets hate, and he was able to bring himself off that ledge. And that's the kind of thing that's really important to remember, that although he did act in a way that was racist and horrifying and potentially extremely violent, murderous even, that he was able to back himself off of that and, and reflect upon what his actions and then not do that thing. And looking back on it, he's ashamed. And so, yeah, it's bad. It's pretty bad. I think Malik Russell is also right that pain, quote, pain suffered is not an excuse for racism. I completely agree with that statement. At the same time, I also think that Liam Neeson deserves forgiveness. He looks back on that and feels shame for how he felt and for how he acted. Luckily, nobody was hurt. Nobody was killed. Forgiveness is something that seems to be lacking a lot on social media. Once someone has been outed for something, whether it's uh, blackface with a governor in Virginia, or uh, whether it's Kevin Hart and the homophobic statements that he said, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, however long it was, it appears as though that forgiveness is not allowed in today's society, especially with multimedia personalities. We tend to put celebrities on this pedestal of moral virtue, like somehow they're better than everybody else, but they're not. They're just as flawed, they're just as average as us, and they're just as, as fallible to desperation and hatred. And one of the things that we can take away from this is that Liam Neeson appears to have grown, but also the, the world and social media might need a little forgiveness when it comes to this stuff. I was outraged when Kevin Hart was shamed into to not hosting the Oscars. I mean, are people allowed to change? Are people allowed to grow? Are people allowed to make mistakes? Are our past selves 
allowed to stay in the past if we have grown as a person? How much repentance do we need in order to be forgiven and accepted back into the fold of society? You can't shame everybody who you disagree with or who has made a mistake in the past that you disagree with. It just is not a way of fostering good dialogue. It's not a way of making great art. Because how are you supposed to self-reflect? And you know, Liam Neeson's in this interview and he's revealing a deep and embarrassing truth about himself. And now he might be shamed out of existence. This is something that someone relates to you as a, you know, a truth about themselves, something that they have, that they realize they made a mistake about it. It's important that we don't crucify them if that's not who they are now. And so, in any case, those are my thoughts on Mr. Neeson. I think he's an incredible actor. I think that he was definitely wrong for what he did in the past, but he seems to have made amends within, within himself about that. He's mended himself. And he looks upon that with shame, and I think it's important to remember that, and it's important to forgive. James Gunn, Kevin Hart, Liam Neeson, all these people have made mistakes in the past, and they should not be crucified forever for them. Even though the internet is written in stone or ink, however you want to say it, who we were in the past is not who we are now. So with that, have a great day, stay safe out there, and don't put your foot in your mouth. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only $2 a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.